going to get this started. Um, ChatGPT is just like such a interesting topic. I feel like um, there's so many different ways that we can use it today. So I just want to like really kind of expand the way that everyone thinks about it. And that way we can utilize it together and come up with some new ideas on how to do it. Um, one of the cool ways I've thought of using it is for product research. And there are also quite a few use cases on uh, e-commerce uh, that we could use it for like product descriptions, emails, um, subjects, a uh, ton of different stuff. So we're kind of going to break into it uh, with product research. And then we're going to um, kind of diverge into how you can use it for other e-commerce applications, such as, you know, writing emails or product descriptions and whatever else comes to mind. So um, kind of starting off here, if I wanted to um, come up with some ideas for product research, uh, what I like to think about is solving people's problems. So the way I would approach this is um, what are 10 common problems um, people have. Okay. And let's see what chat GPT comes up with. And then we're going to kind of like dive deeper into these problems to find different products that we can sell based off of what chat GPT comes up with. So come on chat GPT, do your thing. And sometimes ChatGPT just takes a little bit to respond. But I think I brought it up here too in another window just in case because I saw it was having these issues. So we're just going to start here. So I basically told it to list 10 common problems people have in day to day life. Okay. And then we're going to find products that solve these problems and validate them in Shop Hunter so we can see which ones are making money and which ones are not. Okay, so like number one, stress and anxiety, okay? Financial difficulties, relationship problems, lack of sleep, health concerns, time management, career dissatisfaction, difficulty maintaining a healthy lifestyle, decision-making and problem-solving challenges. Um, so these are like definitely problems that everybody has. Um, stress and anxiety is like a huge one. Um, so with ChatGPT, it's really cool. Um, you don't have to just keep asking it questions, but you could ask it to like go deeper. Um, tell me 10 problems, um, diverging into 10 problems about number one, about actually, let's just say about topic one. Okay. And what ChatGPT will do is it'll expand on this. So like you don't have to just like stop right here. And hopefully it works. Um, since it's being kind of funky, you know, we could also start looking into it from Google too. So like if I wanted to look up um, like stress relief products, I could just Google it while ChatGPT is doing its thing and coming up with other stuff. Um, it's really that simple because right here, what we're going to find our things that are solving people's problems with stress. And it'll kind of help us expand a little bit and understand like what common stress problems people have um, just by looking at these products. So like here looks like this is a wearable stress relief device, very high ticket. Um, here we have some nutritional type supplement that helps people with stress, maybe thinking clearly. And then here we have neck pain. Oh, I like this. Cause like with neck pain, of course, you know, people have stress because they have pain. And I would say like the more painful the problem is, the more you're going to be able to sell a product for as you can see here. Um, this one kind of catches my attention because this is something that we could probably sell 
pretty easily and it looks very simple. So I'm just going to load this up and let me check and see if ChatGPT, oh, looks like they're having issues. So thumbs down ChatGPT. Um, let me see if this populated. Okay. Oh, cool. Look, stress and anxiety. Um, expand on topic number one. Okay. See how you um, common problems on topic one. This is going to be a little bit easier because we want to be like straight to the point. So it's telling them talking about stress. We have depression. Sure. And um, Brennan, absolutely, we will be able to look at some Google Trends based off this. I wonder if we could get ChatGPT to tell us um, some Google Trends. But look here, like we're expanding on stress type issues. So we have like depression, we have chronic pain, insomnia, high blood pressure, diabetes. Man, these are like some serious health issues. It looks like health is definitely correlated with stress, but that's kind of a no-brainer, right? Let's see. It's important to note that this is not an exhaustive list. Okay. So here, like, you could, like, really expand on it. You could also tell it to, like, make this list more simplified. There's a lot of things. You don't have to keep asking it, like, the same question. I just want you guys to know that with ChatGPT, um, you can make it more simplified. So like here, okay, like back pain kind of catches my attention because a lot of these, same with insomnia, um, because a lot of these are health related issues. Um, we want to be very careful about like what type of solutions you're going to offer, especially for someone with anything, um, like diabetes, um, heart diseases, anything like that. Um, so we just want to be careful in those types of areas. Um, but we want to fix like more simple problems that a larger amount of the population is going to have. So like arthritis could be one back pain. Those would be like pretty easy to hit and to find it. Like all we'd have to do is like, look up like arthritis products, right? And then we would find some different stores that we can track around these products. And if we go to like trends.google, so let's go there. I can show you exactly how to see this type of trending information. So if we look up arthritis, I think that's how you spell it. And then we go to past five years. Okay. United States, let's go worldwide. Okay, like it's pretty consistent. It may not be trending up, but we know like a lot of people have arthritis problems. Okay, and you can understand like related queries, but what I like to do is I like to go to top and rising. Okay, so arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis is like very common. And you know, arthritis is like one thing, but you really want to like dive deeper into the issue to solve it because not everyone like fully understands you know arthritis it's if you have arthritis it's going to be common in like one area right so let's look at rising arthritis treatments muscular dystrophy very very interesting but what caught my eye like looking at these is like rheumatoid arthritis so i'm going to click on this one Just want to take a look at what type of products are specific to this. 
So if I go to Google Shopping, okay, we have like a rehab store. I'm gonna open up that one. Let's see, we have this knee device, braceability, brace lab. I'm just gonna open up some of these so we can start getting some ideas. And I am going to add a shop here. And let's start tracking some of these stores, see if anyone else has already started looking at these or not. Okay, that one's not Shopify. Let's try Brace Lab. Okay, that one <clears throat> is not either. We're just gonna keep working through these because eventually we're gonna find a store we can track. There we go, Braceability. Holy moly, guys, look at this. These guys are doing like 100K days. But like, I would look at it like through the bulk, so like more like 80K, but still. This is pretty awesome. So you can see like their top selling products. So like here, we have products that are selling like one third as much as this one, but we see knee. Yeah, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so I can kind of zoom in here and look okay lateral knee so knee knee back brace for disc herniated discs okay stenosis back brace decompression back brace so um, like the main problems I'm seeing here are going to be like knee and back but the one thing that really catches my attention is the top two products selling the most here are knee related okay so what i would do is we're going to pull this up here okay and i'm going to look at it in the store as well this is like a really um, nicely priced item this is like around my sweet spot i like products that are about $150. And then if we go to Alibaba, let's look at how much we can get this device for. Look at that, guys. That looks very similar. Let's just go back and forth. Yeah, that's like the same device right here even too. So we can get this for like 30 to 40 dollars it looks like I would hit up like a few different suppliers for this one and then the keyword that they're going to be coming up for is this um, osteoarthritis knee brace so what I would do is I would just shorten that okay and we could use the rabbit hole method to find more products around arthritis just from chat GPT. Like we were able to like dive into this, you know? So like you could also go back to like chat GPT and say, what are, um, the top, top 10 arthritis, um, conditions called. Okay. I'm going to correct this. So, or actually let's say, I want to list, so list the top 10 arthritis conditions. Okay. Here we're going to, ChatGPT is actually going to teach us about this, which is really neat because like you don't have to like research this on Google. You could just ask the AI exactly what type of issues are related to arthritis. Which is funny, you know, because that best-selling product that we looked at was regarding osteoarthritis, which is um, a joint disease where the cartilage wears, right? And that's how we found this product. And ChatGPT is actually telling us that that's like one of the top conditions that people have. Because the name of the game, in my opinion, with e-commerce is you want to sell products that solve people's problems, right? 
And here we go. Big problem. This solves it right here. How much was this doing in the last month? Like 40K. And that's not the only type of knee device that they sell. Like together, if you were just selling like knee devices, like this company, you could be doing easily like 100K a month. And the margins on these look killer. Like if you're getting this for even like, you know, <clears throat> around 30 to $40, okay. And what is this store selling it for? $143. $144. Like you're left with over a hundred dollar margin on this type of product. And so like, if you look at Google here too, like everybody's selling this for a lot of money, guys, look, there's even people selling it for close to $400, $269. So what you need to do and look, there's even arthritis care for dogs. Like this is crazy. I, I gotta like start look, I want to track some of these to see, um, just what the demand is too. So, okay, we're gonna tag this one for arthritis, which I cannot spell properly. And I'm gonna go back, let's tag it so we can start organizing these. So let's see, aocpet.com, beautiful. We could track that one. And nobody's tracking this yet, so it's gonna take a little bit of time just for us to grab some data on it. But I, this type of product is like very specialized. I don't think that there's gonna be a lot of competition for it either, for like dog knee brace. But like if this was like a niche that you wanted to get into, like you could literally just start tracking all these top stores on here, which I really am going to do because I'm very, very interested. And I didn't even think about dogs when I was researching arthritis stuff like posh dog knee brace. Like, are you kidding me guys? Like this is just weird. Who would think of selling this stuff? So let's go through and find if we, a Shopify one that we can get. Up oh, here we go. Oh my gosh, guys, look at this. Hinged knee brace for dogs. These guys are selling like 11K a month. And they have knee brace for dogs, crucial support, knee brace. That's all these guys are selling. And they're doing like a couple K a day selling just knee braces for dogs. This is crazy. Like yesterday they did, you know, if you're doing like two, three K revenue and the margins are huge on this. Okay. So like, let's look at this, for example, you raise for dogs, $109 okay, for this product. Right? So if we hop on AliExpress, let's just look up dog knee brace. Oh, look, here it is for like $4. $4 guys, these are very affordable. So the way I would test this is I would advertise on Google for dog knee brace. And I would do a search campaign while I waited for my Google shopping to get approved for a site like this. And we would run it and we'd install the other pixels for the other sites like Facebook, Instagram, well, Facebook and Instagram are the same pixels, but like Facebook, TikTok, and then um, it would season those pixels so we could start running uh, remarketing for them if Google started to work. And the way that you're going to implement all those pixels is with Google Tag Manager. You could plug them in a lot easier that way. But yeah, I would make a product page with like pictures from Alibaba. Looks like they have some decent ones. Uh, like this is pretty good. Same with this, they have more. I mean, you just go through them and like find like the best product images. And then you could even have chat GPT. So just as an example, okay guys, we're gonna say like, all right, we're gonna pick this product to test, right? So um, we could go back to chat GPT 
and say, write a product title for, for dog knee braces. Boom, look at this, this is beautiful. Then we could say, um, also write five key benefits that solve a problem for it, okay? So here we're gonna get our key benefits because you wanna focus on how it benefits the customer, right? And these are a little long. So when you come across this, you could then say, um, make them shorter. Watch this. And then you could say like, add some emojis. <laughs> You guys are going to love this. Ooh, I got it thinking. But you get the idea. So, like, we have a title that we can use. Where is it? Flex support canine knee brace for dogs, helping to alleviate pain and stability. Boom. Use that. Okay. And then we can use this for our... Key benefits that we put on our product description. And we didn't even have to copy anybody. We just had ChatGPT write it for us. And would I start with a one product store or a niche store for this? I mean, I would do it more around like the niche. That way you can pivot easier. So, like, if, for example, the dog knee brace did not work out for you. You could try testing like maybe other arthritis type um, products for dogs and see if you can get something um, to work. But like I would do like a niche of a niche. So like I would do like orthopedic um, dog products, for example, as your niche. But don't make your store just um, dog knee braces because you want to be able to pivot to other products if this product doesn't work out for you. But all right, ChatGPT is just kind of hanging. So um, yeah, there we go. Just what I expected ChatGPT to do. Come on. So there's an error. But you know, you just got to keep going. So you know, we got the basis of like what we want. The other cool thing too with like ChatGPT is you can take text like this here. And let's open up like a new window. We could say um, improve this uh, product description text and make it simpler and sympathetic. Okay. And it'll rewrite it for you guys. Like if you like what you see and you just want to improve it, um, you can basically put it in here. Now you could also do fun things. Not that you'd want to do this, um, but you could say like um, sympathize more with the pet, with the dog owner. And it'll give you a new improved product description that will be more sympathetic uh, with the dog owner. But like this is really good. Like so, you could take this and the um, key benefits, 
and um, create a whole product description based off of something just like this here. And you can go through and like, okay, you know, you could tell it to expand more on the key benefits if you want to produce like more long tail product descriptions. And you could basically tell it to produce all this content or you could take content and tell it to improve it, make it funnier, uh, make it more sympathetic, you know, talk more about X, Y, or Z, and it will. But ChatGPT is just having some issues today, so we're just gonna uh, keep working with it, really. Let me see, retry. I think it's just become so popular that people are making so many requests that it's kind of bogging it down a little bit. But like these numbers on this site are pretty impressive, <clears throat> especially on the margins too. On this simple, simple dog brace. I mean, like they're selling for 109 guys and you know, what can we get it for? Like probably get this for like 12, 13 bucks. Cause you want the one that has the other leg in it too. But there's just so many really good options out there to make money. But take examples from, you know, the other products that are up on here. So like if I were to advertise this on Google, for example, what I would look at is um, the lifestyle pictures, which are basically pictures of dogs wearing the knee brace. That's kind of like what I would run. I would look at the products that have more uh, reviews on them because they've been in the market more consistently. So um, it's you kind of want to like copy like what's already working well and try to improve on it. And let's see if we could track some more of these sites here. The dog. I think this one we couldn't. Oh, look. No, we tracked this one already. So let me go through here and eliminate some of these. Whoa, where did I go? Okay. So let's see if we track this one. The dog. Of course. All right. Tailwinds. Posh dog knee brace. This is just so funny. Like these guys took like their own pictures and everything. Like this could totally be improved, especially if they showed the product on the pet versus um, just a picture of it, it's gonna be a lot better. But I guarantee you guys, these guys are making decent money. So <clears throat> let's just say like, um, right, we created our pet um, or our dog knee brace site right? We got a product description up. We have everything we need. Now, let's say we want to write um, like an email for like an abandoned cart. So we can say the chat GPT, write a abandoned cart email for a orthopedic dog website giving 30% giving a 30% off coupon and sympathizing with the dog's owner Subject, don't let your dog miss out on relief. That is so good, guys. Tell me you would not open this email if you had a dog that was hurting from arthritis, yelping around the house. Look, dear value customer, we noticed recently your abandoned cart on our website and wanted to reach out to you, see if there's anything we can do to help. We understand that it could be difficult to make decisions about your dog's health. Wow, this is so good. 
That's why we're offering you a 30% off coupon to use on your next purchase. We know that your furry companion is more than just a pet. They're a member of your family and we want to do everything we can to help them feel their best. Our orthopedic products, this is just so good guys. Like you can just copy and paste this. Boom, there's your first email. Then, okay, you want follow-up emails because you don't just send one email when you're doing <clears throat> your abandoned cart. So um, write a follow-up email giving 40% off and mention the coupon expires in 48 hours. Last chance for 40% off relief for your furry friend. <laughs> Dear customer, we hope that this email finds you and your furry companion well. We wanted to follow up with you about the abandoned cart on your website and offer you one last chance to take advantage of a special deal. For a limited time, we're offering 40% off coupon for your next purchase. This is a great opportunity to try out our orthopedic products and see the difference they can make for your dog's comfortable comfort and mobility. Just use the code FINALREALLY40 at checkout to, relieve, to receive your discount. But hurry, this coupon expires in 48 hours. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact us. We're here to help you and find the right solution for your furry friend. Like, this is so good, guys. Like, And then um, you probably want to send like one more email out, right? I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys send more than two emails out. So we'll say, um, write one more follow up. Um, and let's think of like something we'd want it to say. Cause here's the deal is like when you're using AI, it's like a tool that it's only as good as you know how to use it. Right. So the big thing is like, knowing how to ask it the right question to get the right output. So we'll say like, write one more follow up with a last chance offer of 50% off and really emphasize on um, the pain points, okay? One last chance for 50%. Okay, so here's something cool. This is very um, kind of similar to the last email, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it to change some things because the subject line is, you know, too, too similar in my opinion, okay? So watch this, we're gonna let it finish and then we're gonna give it some input on how to change it. Change the first paragraph so it's different from the previous email being sent. Okay, cool. We understand that life can be hectic and sometimes it can take a little longer to decide what is best for your pet's comfort and mobility. That is why we wanted to reach out to you this very last special offer. I mean, it's a little similar. I mean, so you got to kind of like work on it a little bit to like tell it what you want it to change. And then we're going to say, um, make the title um, let's say make the title different and sound more urgent. Hmm. All right. It made it a little different, but it, it's still the same, right? So when it is doing this, we're gonna want some options to choose from, okay? So what I'm gonna ask it next is I'm gonna ask it for um, write five different subject variations. So 
<clears throat> if you are split testing emails for open rates, you're going to want different options, right? So let's see what it can come up with. Boom. And then we could also say like, write, write five more. Then we could also say like, make it so it's more attention grabbing. Oh, see, I might have just dumped it. It's going to hang, guys. But <clears throat> just to show like, all right, we can come up with all sorts of like really good information. We now have a email flow. We have a product description, a title. Uh, we found a product. Like this is how easy it is to use chat GPT in order to produce like good content around a product that you just researched and found that's selling well. So like if we go back here, we look up arthritis. Okay, like you could do this for like all these different sites. It doesn't have to be pets. You could do this for knee braces for people. Um doesn't matter. Like ChatGPT is that good and can come up with content. You just have to know like what you're trying to come up with in order to tell it, you know, what you're looking for and then how to improve the output on it. And it'll come up with everything you need really to like build your e-commerce store. You could even tell it, you know, right. Come up with, um, let's say like you're trying to like come up with like a brand name, right? Come up with, um, 30 different brand names for a dog orthopedic company <laughs> look how good this is guys this is so amazing And then like, let's say like on your title page, you wanted like um, some taglines come up with 10 different taglines for your website homepage about dog orthopedic um, products. Too many requests killing me. All right, so when it does this, you just open up a new chat window, okay? Ah oh, man, looks like it's not gonna let us go too much further. But I mean, you guys get the idea. Like you can ask for like literally anything that you could think of. You could find the products, expand on the categories, then just look on Google, track them with Shop Hunter, see if it's making money or not. Then do the rabbit hole method where you're gonna grab any one of these products in here and search for it, track all those other stores and just keep going down that rabbit hole to come up with ideas, but only advertise, like I said, like the top 20% that's making 80% of the revenue. So like <clears throat> if I were to pick these products, I would probably grab like these top five to test. And then I would just keep going to the next stores. And yeah, ChatGPT did get nerfed a little bit, but it's still usable. Oh, look, it added the emojis on this one. <laughs> that's pretty smart. Can't, it took a while, but it did it, guys. It did it. Like, if you guys have any questions about like ChatGPT and like how to use it for other e-commerce solutions, I would love to know. Um, you know, just some different challenges on different things, and um, we'll figure out some stuff. But um, I gotta go. I got a meeting here. I'm four minutes late for, so. Um, we'll be in touch. I hope you enjoyed the live and we'll be doing more of these. Peace, guys.